Hello and welcome to Upside Daily. Um, it is so this podcast has been designed to aid you on your spiritual journey to grow as a city changer that understands how to live with faith, hope and love. Now you've joined me on episode two of season two, Never Run at a Giant with Your Mouth Shut. In episode one, we learned that before running at any giant, you need to settle something in your own thinking. Now, this is not just general. This is very specific. It has to settle within you as to how you see yourself in your identity. You see, do you see yourself from the opinion, the perspectives, the foundation of how God sees you? Or do you still find your identity in an inferior reference? This is so important for each and every one of us, because if you do not understand that your origin in God defines your identity at the deepest level, you will always be looking to other paradigms or programs or self-help books or all the things that will never bring fulfillment and true reflection of who you really are. You see, and these voices always try and dominate and influence how you think and live. Now, you can always catch up on episode one as we took a bird's eye view of the story of David and the giant Goliath. And you can read about this in 1 Samuel chapter 17 in the scriptures. But whilst the story of David and Goliath is very well known, there are a number of other characters in the story that actually play a significant role in how things unfold in this, in this moment. You know, this moment of battle when a young man slays a giant with uh, only a stone and a sling. And for a moment, I'd like for us to focus on these characters for today's episode, because I believe that they were not just a significant challenge to David's journey and victory. I believe that some of these same characters are still present in your life and in mine. You see, and when we recognize this, it brings wisdom. It gives understanding and strategy to life. I, I see so many parallels between this portion of scripture and what happens in people's lives today. And as I share on this, you might be going, oh, oh, I know exactly what he's talking about. I can immediately identify how this has been restricting or perhaps even impacting my life. Now, the first voice that we read of in the story of David is, is the voice of the brothers. 1 Samuel 17 verse 15 to 19, it says, David was Jesse's youngest son, and he took care of the father's sheep. And he went back and forth between Bethlehem and Saul's camp. And Goliath came out and gave his challenge every morning for 40 days. Again, significant. But one day Jesse says to David, hurry, take these roasted grains and, and 10 loaves of bread and cheese, uh, you know, take it to the commanding officer. And, and whilst he's there, uh, Goliath comes out. And Goliath defies the armies of Israel. Now, in that moment, David responds and he says, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? But his oldest brother, Eliab, hears this and he becomes angry at him and says, You know, what are you doing here anyway? Who's taking care of, of, of that little flock of sheep out in the desert? You spoiled brat. <laughs> the Bible actually says that, you spoiled brat. You came here just to watch the fighting, didn't you? You see, here's the first character in the story, the first voice in David's ear. Because the impact of what the brothers will say to you will always be to remind you of how they perceive you. You are only a shepherd. You know, really, you should be tending the sheep. You, you shouldn't be doing these things. Um, you should be minding your own business. This is how I see you. This is my opinion of you. Can I tell you, as long as you hold on to that, which the brothers would have you believe, you will never run at a giant. <laughs> You know, it's no wonder that later in the story of David, he actually connects to Jonathan as a brother, Saul's son, in a much 
stronger way than he connects his life to Eliab. Because Jonathan was the crown prince and yet he recognized the anointing on David's life. He didn't just see a shepherd boy. He saw somebody who had been anointed to be king. And this brotherhood was stronger than that of natural descent. Jonathan could look beyond his own selfish desires and promptings and recognize the hand of God on David's life. Eliab could not do this. The brothers could not do this. The question is, who are the brothers in your life today? What are they saying? What are they perhaps saying that you should be moving away from and getting out of? (laughs) The second voice in the story is the voice of the souls. You know, eventually David comes to see Saul and, and David says to Saul, how is it possible that you lose heart on account of this Philistine? You, you know, are you not able to go out and fight him? Um, and then Saul responds and says, uh, you know, you cannot go out to go and fight against this Philistine because you are only a young man and he has been a warrior from his youth. You see, different to the brothers, what the souls in your life will do, they will always paint the picture as it is. They will state the obvious and they will make that their foundation of how they see you. And can I say, we we all sometimes need a soul in our life just for that reality check. You know, the question is, are you going to build on this reality or are you going to build on the reality that God reveals? Again, if you build your life on the opinions of the souls or the brothers, for that matter, you will always live an unfulfilled life from an inferior reference to who you truly are and what your capacity truly is. Now, David responds to Saul, you know, and he says, your servant has been keeping the father's sheep. It is so, you know, he, he actually recognizes the reality, but then he says, but there's more, you know, the, the lion and the bear and, and I, they came and I killed them both. And this uncircumcised Phil, Philistine, listen to how he references Goliath. It's not just a giant. It's an uncircumcised Philistine. He recognized the reality of with which God is speaking to him. And he says, you know, the, the God rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear. And surely he will rescue me in this situation. Again, the question to you poses, who are the souls in your life? Because they'll give you a great reality check. Yes, from their perspective and their opinion. But they will never deliver the thoughts and the opinions, neither the strength of the father's opinion over your life. Here's the third voice, Goliath's. You know, David approaches Goliath and Goliath says to him, am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? You know, and the Philistine starts cursing David by his God. It's fascinating, not by his own gods. He curses him by Yahweh. And he says, come here and I'll I'll, I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. You see, Goliaths can never recognize the plan or the thoughts of God, as a matter of fact. They might even oppose it. You cannot argue nor reason with a Goliath. There is no space in that thinking there. You see, you see it absolutely clearly in how David reacts. You know, it's as if he responds and says, Goliath, there is no thinking space in my mind allowed for you. You occupy no space in my mind, my thoughts. I will not allow you to occupy any space. This space is too precious. This real estate is too precious to give any space sense of reason to you in this regard. I'm not going to allow this. You know, remember what I'm not saying here is that, that, you know, Goliath is like a devil hiding away behind a bush and and you should give him no room. I'm saying here that there are thought processes, paradigms of life that you should be giving no thinking space to. Your thoughts The mind of Christ is too precious a real estate to allow a paradigm that would not only want you to drag you down, but to drain the life out of you and ultimately lead you to destruction. Do not allow this. You know, can I underline what I said in the previous episode? You cannot run at a giant. If the first fundamental aspect of your identity has not been established, you are a son of God. This is your starting place. And once that is settled, you can allow the environment of the brothers and the souls and the Goliaths, and you can hear their perspectives and know what is true about you. Oh. 
You know, there there is so much in this that we need to consider. Um, can I say thank you again for joining me on Upside Daily today? As always, it's a joy and an honor to connect with you. In tomorrow's episode, we're going to chat about finding a God image in your self image. You know, why would this be important for us? Um, because it's important, as important as running at a giant with your mouth wide open. So until then, live blessed and take care.